my seven o'clock on Tuesday, second of August. Uh, beautiful. And I've just got my first sight of Pitcairn Island rising mysteriously like a shadow. It's quite tall. Can you see it yet? Pitcairn Radio, Pitcairn Radio, Pitcairn Radio. This is sailing vessel Hippolyta, Hippolyta, Hippolyta. Over. Pitcairn Radio, Pitcairn Radio, Pitcairn Radio. This is sailing vessel Hippolyta, Hippolyta, Hippolyta on 16. Over. Pitcairn Radio, this is Hippolyta. Nothing heard on channel 16. We'll try again when closer in. Hippolyta out. Pitcairn Radio, this is sailing vessel Hippolyta, over. Good morning, Henry, can you hear me? Brenda. Good morning, Brenda. Yeah, I can hear you. Lovely to hear your voice. Over. Okay, roughly, um, I was down on the work site, so I couldn't actually, I can hear you partially. Anyway, how far away are you? Uh, so I'm about 11 nautical miles um, from Bounty Bay. Um, I'm going quite slowly because I wanted the sun high before I anchored, but also I needed to talk to you about the conditions. I, it does look like they're getting better, but it's about when they're going to be good enough. So I just had another chat with Brenda Christian, who's the immigration officer of one of the 42 inhabitants of Pitcairn. And she has said that Bounty Bay is marginal at the moment. And I'm going to go and have a look. It, the weather is improving, so it's marginal but safe then I'll drop, my, drop anchor and wait probably till tomorrow to go ashore, just to be safe. If it's marginal and I'd rather not, I'll go to the lee side of the island for the wind and just heave to for the night and come in and anchor first thing tomorrow. That's Adam's Rock with its solitary palm tree. Bounty Bay, this is it. It looks picturesque, but actually you could see the waves crashing. It's a big swell. It wouldn't be a safe anchorage for tonight. Just getting a thorough recce done over the top of the anchorage. I've been given some coordinates. With the charts being fairly inaccurate here, it's important to identify a good spot to drop the anchor. I'm not sure if I'll be able to come back tomorrow, but if I do, then I'll know I've nailed the right spot to come back to. Now I'm going to take the boat around the island and head off to the east and wait overnight for some better weather tomorrow.
not actually going to keep in the leeward side of the island. I'm going to take her offshore to windward so I drift in the right direction, have some supper and wait for tomorrow. Looks like I'm going to have a great sunset and tomorrow's another day. Been saving these puppies for 26 days for exactly this a big pre anchorage breakfast with homemade sourdough and a bit of OJ. It's Wednesday morning, I'm going back to try again, see if the anchorage is any better. I'm not hugely hopeful to be honest. The wind's gone right down, but the big swell and it's, it's heading directly into the anchorage. Luckily, I was wrong, and despite a two meter swell, I decided to risk it for a chocky biscuit and put the anchor down. morning I've anchored okay but the um, it turns out that we've got a dinghy with a metal bottom which is brilliant for diving but it can't be put together by one person or it can in a showroom but you, the only place to pump it up on the boat you can't get down either side of it and it's just not possible to, to put it together so I wrestled with that for about an hour whilst they're all waiting for me at the jetty and then of course the outboard won't start uh, and I almost lost it trying to get it on. It's just these things, doing these things alone that I've never done alone before and it's every, every day is a learning day and uh, the outboard combination is just, I just can't handle it, especially in this hugely rocky anchorage. It's just a, an absolute impossibility. Um, so the outboard won't start now. So I'm asking the, um, I've asked them to come and get me. They're gonna put out their, their fishing dory and come and pick me up for a fee, I think. So, yeah, it's just frustrating. Um, I think I'm gonna to have to get them to bring me out again when I leave because I'm gonna to have to pack the dinghy up on land and then get them to bring me out with the dinghy already packed up because there's no way I can, um, I mean, there's no way I can pack that up on deck. It's just, yeah, it's, a, it's an absolute nightmare, frankly. Um, and I've just sort of got really excited for the beginning of the day and I'm absolutely exhausted and a little bit heat stroked, so not ideal. Here comes my ride. Oh, I'm gonna get lots of photos from the land, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I came from Ecuador. I was gonna come all the way from Panama, but I had a steering failure. I've got to get there by Sunday, it's a big, big, big storm coming in.
So after a lot of drama, I've landed in Pitcairn, and this is the little harbour. That's the boat I came in on. As you can see, it's not a particularly nice anchorage. Oh. But there's Hippolyta. I've had the obligatory COVID test and the doctor's giving me a lift up to Government House which also doubles as the Government Store, the Chancellor of the Exchequer and the Post Office uh, to complete all of the checking in formalities, pay for my little boat ride and then I'm going to go and explore the island. Is called the Hill of Difficulty. Yeah, no, I, I heard about that. <laughs> it's a good hill for hill wraps. Oh, it's better now, it's been concrete. It's just a track. So everything here gets done by quad bike and Brenda's giving me a lift up to her house, which is very kind of her, and um, I think I've got a cold beer that Ed Joseph bought for me, which is very kind of him. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is one of the best views I've ever seen from someone's front patio. Brenda and her husband, Mike, sit here with their morning coffee and watch whales frolicking and just gaze at the endless Pacific down a pretty verdantly green landscape. It's absolutely stunning. Brenda is very kindly giving me a lift up the switchbacks through Adamstown, which is the main town. And you can see the concrete roads here. Once we get outside of the town, there will be dirt tracks. And uh, she's taking me up to the highest point in the island, known as High Point, on the western side and once I'm up there I can walk along the ridges and then just walk back down to the island. I've not got much time today because I only got the formality sorted um, by about midday so I've got to be back on the boat in a couple of hours so this is really helpful. It'll save me a bit of time and I should see some good scenery. Quite a good trip to show you what the vegetation is like here. It's subtropical but there's lots of palm trees and banana trees but then lots of deciduous trees as well and the vegetable patches are pretty serious because they grow all of their own fruit and veg so all of the islanders take that really seriously. Out of Adamstown and into the hills we soon came across another inhabitant of the Pitcairn Islands who was fairly friendly. Is he fairly chilled out, is he? Oh, yeah. she'll, she'll come oh shim. And, um, <coughs> she'll come and look for food. Hello. This is Miss T, a female giant Galapagos tortoise who was imported at some point in the last few decades. And she makes pretty good use of the island's road network, so it can often be found. She's huge and extremely funny. Brenda's just gone off to get some fruit, which we're going to feed her with. Hey. Oh. Hey. Oh. I have to say, until she gets what she wants, she's a fairly menacing presence. Hey. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Big them. Come on, come on. That is come just on. quality. <laughs> hey, I watch my finger. There you go. <laughs> Big night in a mess.
So Brenda's dropped me off at the bottom of Gannett Ridge and I'm going to walk along and I'm starting to get my first views of this stunning island. So here I am on Gannett Ridge in the Pitcairn Islands and all of the trouble of getting here, all the cost, the expense, the years, the months, it sort of just fled away. This is without doubt the most exquisite place I've ever been in my life. It's untouched and it's utterly, utterly beautiful. This spot is known as Christian's Lookout and it's the peak on the southwest side of the island. Southeast, sorry. And you can see the beautiful water. And then we look out over Adams Town. The peak at the other end and the saddle that runs in between them. Below Adams Town, you can see Hippolyta. I'm dashing down the island to get back to the jetty. I'm late to meet my lift back to the boat because I spent too long exploring the top of the island. But I've just found these fantastic homesteads with these wonderful gardens and goat runs and vegetable patches. It really is incredible. You just come to these little, and suddenly it looks all very cultivated. It's absolutely. Here's Jaden putting my lift back in the water. Yeah, and then they pile it in. Lots of delicious fruit from the Pitcairn Islands. Some yams, some mangoes, some corn, little bananas, carrots, uh, avocados and a cabbage. And these things, don't know what they are, but they look good. I think they're fruit. But I'm just washing them off to make sure there's no bugs going to take advantage of a flat kitchen. I'm feeling incredibly buoyed by my first day on Pitcairn. I've downloaded my drone software so tomorrow I'll be able to get more drone footage. Uh, for the moment I'm just going to eat enormously and then fall into a deep deep sleep ready for my second day on Pitcairn which is pretty exciting. Baby. I've woken up to this exquisite dawn in Bounty Bay. I'm enjoying my coffee whilst pondering a fantastic day one and looking forward to a equally good day two. Brenda's agreed to come and pick me up early as so I can go and explore the island with my drone.
after a wonderful day of exploring, the sun is setting on my second day at Pitcairn and it's time to be somewhere else. So I'm bringing the anchor up. Brenda has been wonderful the whole time I've been here. She's been so kind and taking me around everywhere and introduced me to her family. And not least of it, Jaden, who serviced my outboard and embarrassingly showed me how to use the fuel switch which was off, which was why it was not working. But it's time to be somewhere else. So there we are, we're off the hook and ready to go. Uh, Bounty Bay is a little bit rolly, but absolutely stunning tonight. Um, and I'm saying goodbye to Pitcairn after an absolutely incredible two days. I'm gonna miss it. But Mangareva is next and that's pretty, pretty stunning too, so off we go.